uh, this uh, section 2.1 continued more on derivatives. In the last lesson, uh, we talked about um, uh, the definition, and we showed how to get the definition of, uh, of your uh, slope of your tangent line here. I'm going to show you the alternative form. Okay, but first, you guys, uh, a slope is rate of change. So if you see rate of change, that just means slope. And rate of change just means derivative. So derivative just means slope. Okay, slope means derivative. All right, so, um, okay, this is what we talked about in the last lesson. This was my definition of my slope of my tangent line. That's what this says. Slope of my tangent line equals derivative is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And provided that your limit exists. And provided that your limit exists means it has to be the same, has to be the same from coming from the left as it is coming from the right on there. All right, so... Uh, derivative notation, you guys, let's get used to this, okay? This is read f prime, so this would be f prime of x or just f prime right here, okay? Or they might say y prime, okay? Or uh, you might see uh, dy dx or dx sub y or d sub xy, and that just means the derivative of y with respect to x. Sometimes you might see dty, which is the derivative of y with respect to t, which is uh, t being time. Okay, and those are on velocity problems later. Okay, uh, so derivatives uh, don't exist at jumps, sharp points, or cusps. Uh, asymptotes are vertical tangents. Okay, so here's some jumps right here. So derivatives would not exist at the jumps. It would not exist at the sharpie right here or the cusp right here. It would not exist at this asymptote right here. And then um, vertical tangents are when concavity changes from concave down to concave up or where concave up to concave down, you get a vertical tangent. So derivatives don't exist on those, you guys. So a function can be continuous and not have a derivative like right here. At this point, it's continuous, but it doesn't have a derivative right here. Okay, but differentiation does not uh, imply continuity. So uh, just remember, derivative just means slope. So you're just talking about the slope. So when you when it says derivative, that just means slope. All right. So here's the alternative form of derivative. Okay, it's f prime of c, and you let x approach c. It's actually you're letting c approach x, but your book is writing at x approach c, and I'll show you in just a minute. But uh, it's f of x minus f of c all over x minus c. It just depends on the problem. So um, uh, example, let's find uh, the derivative, which is y prime, if y equals 2 over x, okay? I'll show you both ways. Here's the old way, okay? Remember, here's uh, the way we did in the last lesson. So I'm going to go, um, uh, it's going to be 2 over x plus delta x minus 2 over x, and it's going to be uh, over delta x. So there it is right there. Okay, here I'm going to get uh, a common denominator uh, in, the, in this uh, numerator right here. So I'm going to multiply this uh, this fraction by x over x and this fraction by x plus delta x over x plus delta x, okay? And I get that right there, okay? So then they get a common denominator of x plus delta x, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 2, negative 2 through, and that's going to get me up to here, okay? And then notice uh, the 2x and the minus 2x cancel each other out, and I'm left with a negative 2 delta x, and then the delta x is now cancel. So now that the delta x is cancel, I can go ahead and substitute in uh, delta x equals 0 right there. So I get, um, uh, I get uh, uh, negative 2 over x squared. Okay, so that's the slope of the, any, uh, of the tangent line at any point on that curve right there. All right, so let's try it uh, the new way right here, okay? Remember, it's y equals uh, uh, 2 over x, so it's going to be uh, 2 over x minus 2 over c over x minus c, okay? Now I'm going to get rid of this uh, complex fraction by multiplying this guy by... Actually, I'm going to get rid of the, the complex fraction by multiplying by 1, but my 1 is going to be xc over xc. And then that'll just simplify it a little bit. See, this is just 1 right here. When I distribute xc times that, the x's will cancel, so this will be 2c. And then when I do this times this, the c's will cancel, so I'll have 2x right there. You guys with me? Okay, I'm going to pull a 2 out now, and I'm left with c minus x. And c minus x and x minus c are negative 1's of each other, so when they cancel, a negative appears. All right now, I'm going to let uh, c equal x right at this last stage right here. So when I let c equal x, I get to the same answer. Okay, it just depends on the problem, which way you want to do. Uh, they're both uh, equally easy for me. 
Uh, so it just depends, and you just it's just practice, you guys. It wasn't easy when I first saw this stuff, you guys. It was just seemed like, why? Why would I do this? But you'll see why in a little while. So find an equation of the tangent line at the given point. Okay, so first I'm going to find the slope using my slope formula. I'm going to use the alternative way uh, just to get some more practice with that. So it'll give me the slope of this whole line of this whole curve right here at any point. And then, and then when I find that equation, I'm going to substitute in this x value at that point right there to get the slope at this point right there. Once I figure out the slope at that point, it's going to be a numeric value. Then I'll have a slope. I'll use this point and do y equals mx plus b. All right, so let's get busy here. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, the new way here. It's going to be um, uh, square root of x minus 1 minus the square root of c minus 1 over x minus c. Okay, now... Right here, get used to this, you guys. The conjugate trick works almost every single time. The conjugate trick is this. If you have a binomial, and this is a binomial, the square root of x minus 1 minus the square root of c minus 1, so the conjugate would be the same thing with the plus. Okay, this is just 1, so I'm not changing the value. It's just 1. And conjugates, when you multiply them, you just square them and subtract them. Okay, so I'm going to square x minus 1. It's going to be just uh, square root of x minus 1. It's just going to be x minus 1. I'm going to square the square root of c minus 1. It's going to be just c minus 1 and subtract them. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative through. So it's going to be minus c minus 1. I'm sorry, plus 1. So the minus 1 and plus 1 are going to cancel out. You guys with me? I'm left with x minus c. Now notice the x minus c's cancel out. Okay, now I can substitute in c equals x. So when I substitute in c equals x, this is going to be x root x minus 1, another root x minus 1. So I'm going to add them together and get two of the root x minus 1s. Okay, so there's the slope of that tangent right there, of the whole curve. Now I'm going to substitute in 5. 5 right there, so the square root of 5 minus 1 is the square root of 4. So when I substitute that in right there, I get the slope at that point to be 1 fourth. Okay, I shrunk up the problem right there just so I can do that. So now I'm going to plug in uh, the point 5, 2, use my Algebra 1 skills with this slope and this point, and I get there's my tangent at that point right there. There's the equation of the tangent line at that point on that curve right there. All right, let's... Uh, Let's see. So in your graphing calculator, I think your textbook asks you to, to verify uh, that the slope is one-fourth. So this is how you do it in the TI calculator. This is how you do it in the Casio uh, calculators right here. Both of them, you'll get uh, the slope to be one-fourth. Actually, you, your calculators will give you 0.25, which is one-fourth. Okay, so when they ask you to verify the slope is one-fourth, that's how you do it in your calculator. Of course, in my class, I'm going to require you to show all that work, and I'm sure your calculus teacher also will require you to show all that work. My mentor, Mrs. Sargent, was the greatest. Uh, she I, she let me visit her classroom 10 years ago, and I sat in. And uh, anyway, so uh, these um, I, I got all this from her. Anyways. So finding the equation of the tangent line of the graph of y equals h of x at the point, uh, and it's going to be at that point, and they gave me a little hint, this tangent line is also running through this point right here. All right, so here we go. It's a little stretch. Your graph may look something like that. I don't know what the graph is, but I, I want the equation of the tangent line. I want this equation of this line right here. Okay, it's tangent at that point right there. All right, so you guys remember this from your Algebra 1 class, y minus y1 equals m, minus, uh, m times x minus x1, point-slope formula. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and substitute in this point right here because it's going through that point right there. All right, so I know that, and then I'm going to go ahead and substitute this point in right here to find the slope. And so when I do that, I get the slope to be 1 half. Okay, so now I know the slope is 1 half. It's going through that point right there, so it's all downhill from here. I'm just uh, fundamentals of algebra one now, and I get that as my final answer. Okay, if you're in my calculus class, I would assign that as your homework. Take care.